Okay, today I am going to talk about writing a SGQL parser. So, a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Zion. Uh, I am from Singapore, so my website is zion.sg. Uh, I am currently working as a freelance web developer and um, also learning uh, how to do mobile apps. So, that's, that's a requirement of my client. So, using Java for Android and uh, Swift for iOS. So, to the top proper. So, what is SGQR? So, to answer that, let our government uh, uh, tell you through its video. Wow! E-payments are simple, swift, safe, and growing. Sarah likes QR payments as she can pay using only her phone. But many different QR codes confuse her. The answer? SGQR. It combines the different QR codes into one. With SGQR, Sarah can now see what she is buying. Sarah just has to pick her payment choice, open the app, scan the QR code, confirm the correct merchant, and pay the correct price. All Sarah and the hawker need to do now is to check that the payment has gone through. And it's lunchtime. Look out for more SGQR and make it part of your e-payments experience. Just remember, pick Scan, pay. Okay, uh, so don't mind the words on the picture. I took the picture as it is on the website from Sydney. Uh, it's just to show the different type of payment providers that we have right now. So um, in the past, if a merchant, okay, in this case a merchant is someone who sells you food or uh, in the hawker center or the food court. So if the merchant wants to... Uh, uh, supports multiple payments. So the chicken rice store, hawker supports a Grab Pay, Faith Pay, Nets, uh, DBS Pay, La, Visa, and uh, B Pay by Honest V, right? They need to put 10 QR codes on their store. And you know the hawker store is very small, right? You can't actually put a lot of uh, things. You have your cash register, you have your plates, you have a fork and spoon. So actually, there's not much space to put all these QR codes. So uh, our government, Singapore government, had a bright idea. Why not unify them into one type of QR code? And that's where we get the uh, SGQR. It's a bit small. I'm not quite sure whether you can see here. Um, yeah. So basically, right, um, instead of 10 QR codes, you, have, um, you actually have one QR code. And then at the poster below, it will just show you what are the payment providers that the uh, merchant actually supports. Now you can have up to, a hawker can display up to about 25 payment providers, but they may not show all of them. Because for example, the hawker probably they only sign agreement with GrabPay and Alipay. So you can use a DBS banking app to scan the SGQR. Okay. Uh, but you will not let the payment uh, go through because uh, the merchant did not sign an agreement with DBS. As simple as that. So, uh, yeah, it's been quite small. Okay, never mind. Resolution. Okay, let me reduce my resolution. Uh, huh? Ah, okay. Okay, let's try again. Okay, the mic is responsive. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Okay, now I'm using a responsive uh, slides. So today my talk, I'm going to split into four sections. First is introduction, which I've just gone through. Second is a specification. I'm going to go through the specification. Third, I'm going to go through the code that I wrote to uh, read and analyze the SGQR. And fourth part will be a uh, live demo. So first part, the SGQR or Singapore Quick Response Code for, uh, for, for long, uh, is actually based on the EMV QR code specification for payment systems, merchant presented mode, because this QR code is presented by the merchant. Uh, it's actually found on this website. If you go to this website, actually it's from the MES website. It's written also. So you get this PDF file. Very nice. So uh, if you scroll through everything, it's about 47 pages. Okay, 
I'm going to go straight to the data organization part. Okay, um, for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to use a sample SGQL code that I generated. So basically, this is the QR code. And then if you scan it, you see it's all these contents. You find that it's not encrypted. You can actually read the part, uh, the text is inside over it. Okay, so uh, SGQR actually consists of data objects. Each data object has three fields. The ID is co coded as a two-digit numeric value with a value ranging from 00, 0 to 99. Okay, quite obvious. The length is also coded as a two-digit numeric value okay, with a value ranging from 0, 01 to 99. And the value field has a minimum length of one character and a maximum length of 99 characters. So the length part, okay, the length part over here, this determines how long the value is. If this one says uh, 0, 05, so I'll read five characters for the value field. Okay, uh, for those who just came in, I'm going to use this uh, sample IGQR code as uh, for my talk. These are the contents. Okay, this is the same contents of the SGQL broken up into data objects. Every single color uh, denotes a different uh, data object. So you have the red one is one data object, the green is another data object, the blue, the long blue one is another data object, the long green one is another data object, the blue another one. Green another one, blue another one, green another one, blue another one, and last of all, the red one. Okay, let's look at the first data object, 000201. So if you break it up, ID is 00, length is 02, value is 01. Length is 02, that means I will actually read the next two characters after it, which is 01. Okay. What is ID 00? So if you look at the uh, if you look at the PDF for MES website, ID 00 is a payload format indicator. Okay, and the first data object must always have ID 00. That's it. Okay, and the value is always one for now. They never detect any other values. So the first data object is always ID 00. Now let's look at the last one, the last uh, one which is uh, this 630457B3. We pick it up. The first two, the first two digits or characters is always the ID, ID 63. The next two digits, which is 404, means the length of the value. So that means I'll read the next four characters for the value. So in this case, the value is 57B3. So ID 63, according to this PDF, is basically the checksum, the CLC. Let me see here. Over here. Okay, it's a CLC. Now, an SGQL code consists of data objects and templates. Okay? A template itself can contain data objects and also nested templates. So let's see what it means. Just now we had uh, the SGQR, so this is the third SGQR. Okay, let me refresh your memory. Remember this uh, long blue color one? So now we are focusing on this long blue color data object. Okay. In this case, the first two characters is 26, okay? And if you look at the PDF, uh, merchant account information, 02 to 51. So if the ID is 26, it falls below here. So it is the merchant account information template. What is the length? The length is 81, the words in uh, italics. And the value is this long value over here. Same thing, it consists of many data objects. So I'll break it up by color again. Red, 
green, blue, green, blue. So let's look at the first one. So remember, this ID26 is a data object by itself, but it is a template. ID26 is a template. So their long value can be broken up into more data objects. So the first data object, 0011sg.com.net, we break it up. The first two characters is 00, ID 00. Now, the ID is not unique. It depends on context. If it is in a root template, it's in the root, like I say, like 26. Okay? So 26 in this, in this aspect is in the top level, the root level. So we look at 26 under the root data object. But now this 00, okay, the ID, the context is under template 26. So we need to look at template 26, which is page 34. Okay, 33. Okay. When your ID is 0, 02 to 51, so in this case it's ID 26. 00, 00 in this case is no longer payment payload format indicator. 00, 00 means globally unique identifier. So what your ID means depends on the context it is in. Is your ID under the root data object or is it under a template? So let me show you just now the 00, 00 which is on page 19 or page 20. In this case, if it's under the root of a QR code, 00, 00 means payload format indicator. But if it is under a template, 26. Okay, it means globally unique identifier. Okay, that is the specifications. So right now, I'm going to go to the parser code. In case you cannot remember this link, okay, or you, what you can do is go to my website, zion.sg. You click on GitHub. And you look for SGQR parser, which is over here. Okay, I've written this as a PHP library. So actually, you can uh, install it via Composer. Uh, Composer require. Uh, it has some tests, which I'll go through later. So first thing I want to go through is uh, how do I store the configuration? This whole PDF chunk, right? How do I put it in my PHP library? So I've done it using PHP arrays because that's the most natural uh, for configuration using PHP. Uh, you'll notice that I actually have a JSON and a PHP. They are the same. Uh, just in case someone wants to use a JSON for their JavaScript project, it's, it's there. So I uh, provided it in two formats. Okay, let's look at the PHP uh, configuration. Uh, I've stored the specifications as an array. The array has just three keys. First one is root data objects by ID. So just now remember we saw this uh, this payload format indicator. Uh, ID is 00, zero payload format indicator. So over here root data objects by ID, I'll store it by the ID 00, zero. the name is payload format indicator, and I put some comment. This comment is from the PDF as well. Okay, uh, and just now 26, let's look at 26. Okay, 26. The name is merchant account information. Blah, 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 template reserved for additional payment networks is template equals to true. The configuration, as I mentioned, has three keys. First one is root data objects by ID, this one. The second one is templates by ID, which is this one. Okay, templates by ID. Okay, so instead of dumping the whole set 
of nested information in the root data or just by ID, I've chosen to split it up. So that's easier for me to change stuff next time. I'll explain later. So for 26, which is over here, 26. Okay, user's info template equals to true. So what will happen? I will read from the third key of the configuration, which is this. This info template. Okay, remember just now, we saw on page 34, or page 33. So over here, we find that, oh, for template, for ID 26, ID 00 means globally unique identifier. So these are, these are what I call info templates. So in this case, you find that I have the same thing here, ID 00, name is globally unique identifier. And from 01 all the way to 99, it's actually uh, payment, payment system specific. The reason why, okay, I put this in the key by itself and I use user's information template because it's true. Imagine I have to duplicate all the information up there into every of these 26 to 51 and later 80 to 99. You'll blow up my, my configuration array by a lot. So this is how I, what I do to actually string my configuration array. Things that, uh, let's say if next time the info template, let's say uh, 99, okay, if 99, is, if 99 is changed, okay, then I only need to change one place, which is over here. I don't need to, do, I don't need to change for 26 all the way to 99. Okay, that's a configuration. Now for the source code. There's only one, one, uh, one class, which is the parser class. Um, you notice that actually I've uh, listed a lot of constants because it's uh, how I want to refer to it. If I spell the constant wrongly, uh, the interpreter will actually complain to me that we are pass, pass error, syntax error. But if I spell a string wrongly, okay, I won't see any error. I might not see any error. So that's why I uh, decided to use uh, constants to refer to the keys in the configuration array. So uh, first up, let's look at the... Let's look at the constructor. Okay, for the constructor, I allow the passing in of a separate alternate set of specifications if the developer wishes to do so. If not, you'll just read from the one that's provided, which is uh, this file that I gave just now. Okay. There is only one public method, which is pass. Okay, uh, and I'll just pass in the contents of the QR code. Remember the long string just now? I'll just pass it in. So passing consists of two actions. First is you break it up into the separate data objects. Okay. Um, let me see. So first is to break out the QR code into the individual data objects. The second part would be to actually analyze each data object. So first I have uh, extract data objects. Okay. Over here. Then later on, I have uh, analyzed data object. So now I'm going to go through, a, uh, go through a trial run, a sample of passing the IGQR code. Okay, let's, let's take a look at this. I'll just copy this. I'll just look through the first tree. Okay, so let's look at uh, extract data objects. The test is actually passing and the specifications. In the beginning, no specification is passing. If no specification is passing, I will refer to this one, root data objects by ID, which is this whole chunk over here. Okay, this whole chunk over here. 
So I'll start from the first character, which is index. Then I'll just extract the ID. The ID is basically the first two characters. So basically, I'm looking at this part. So ID equals to 0, 0. And then the, the length of this data object is actually 2. And the value is, okay, the value is actually 1. And then the index is actually forwarded to the next one over here. So the next time around when it goes through a loop, you will start with the second data object. You will start with the rest of the QR code. So what, I'm, what I will do with this information is I will call this. What's the ID? ID is 0, 0. Uh, I will skip the quotation marks for speed. Huh? The value is 0, 1. How about the specs? Initially, the specs is referring to root data objects by ID. So I'll pass in this whole chunk. And analyze data object by actually passing specs 0, 0. So basically, I take in this part. And I'm passing in. OK? Now we'll go to, huh? Eh? Went to sleep. Ah, candy. Okay. I have a backup projector here just in case. Okay. 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 Now we are at this part where the first data object, he has extracted the first data object. And now it's going to analyze it. So I'm going to call this analyze data object ID 0, length is 0, 2, value is 0, 1. And this is specification that's going to pass in. So now let's look at the analyze single data object function. So first thing, uh, does the specs belong to a template? No. Root ID 0, 0 is not a template, so skip. Does a spec use info template? So we look at this just now. Okay. Is template is equal to false. It's not specified, so it's false. So it is uh does uh and there is no user's info template key. So it is it does not use a info template. So basically skip. So right now the result, okay, this will be the resolve resolving of the data object. So the value will basically be this.
I D is a zero zero name is a payload format indicator. The length is two, uh, yeah, two, and the value is zero one. And the command is this one shall be the first data object in the QR code. Okay. And when this is passed back, okay, is it a template? Okay, it's not a template. So you want skip. So return the result. So return the result. Basically, it is appended to an array of arrays. So your final result is actually this. Okay, so this is the first part. Now let's look at, now I will skip the second data object. I will go straight into the third data object because this is a template. So it's a slightly more complicated. So we skip, so now we are here. Okay, let me open up a new window. Now we are interested in this. So now ID is equal to 26. The length is the next two characters, which is 81. And the value is this long string over here. So same thing. I've extracted the third data object. Now I'm going to analyze it. So I'm going to call this. So what's ID? ID is 26. The length is 81. And the value is, I'm not going to type it out. Okay, and the specs. This time round, remember originally the specs come from the root data objects by ID which is over here. So now you're passing specs 26, which is over here, 26. Okay, I'm going to copy this whole thing here. Okay. Now let's look at the function analyze single data object. So first part, okay, does the specs belong to a template? That means is template equals to true. If yes, get the template information and child data objects, if any. So let's look at this. So right now in the function, In the function itself, this is the specs. Okay, let me just format it nicely. Okay. Look at the signature, the signature actually passing the specs. So right now, this is the status of the specs. Is template equals to true. So I will go to my configuration. I will go to templates by ID. Templates by ID. And I will just copy this one, this array. I'll copy the whole array and merge it. Okay, it's over here, array merge. So I'll actually get it from templates by ID. I'll merge it. So now, this is the state of my specs. Okay, I added one more users in flow template equals to true. Now, next part. Does the specs use the info template? If yes, popular, populate child data objects with it. So I will add a new key, data objects by ID, and then I populate it with the info template. So, I will have a new key, 
data objects by ID and where am I going to get this information from? Go back to my configuration. Info template. This is the info template. I am not going to copy everything. I'll just copy up to 2. Actually, it goes all the way to 99. Okay. It goes all the way to goes all the way to 99. Let me see. Yeah, okay. Goes all the way to 99. So 0, 0 in this case, you see globally you need identifier. So now what is my next step? My next step is actually to pass this data object, which is this one. I'm still I'm still at this level. I'm still at this level. So my result. Is over here. Ah, I should just copy. Yeah. Okay, what is the ID this time? I am right now at this level. I'm still at this level. Okay? So my ID right now is 26. What is the name? Oh. Merchant account information. And what is the length? The length is 81. And the value is this funny long stuff over here. Okay, and the command I'm going to just skip. So that is the current data object for ID 26. Now the next part. Pass data object further if it is a template. If it is a template, then I will set the result data objects and I will call extract data objects. But this time around, I will pass in the value. I don't pass in the whole original QR code. And I will actually pass in the specs, not from the root data objects, I will pass in from the data objects by ID. Okay, so let me copy this part. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to have a new key called data objects. And the result is actually going to be extract data objects are passing this whole value, this whole value over here. And how about the specs? Our specs are actually passing from here. Remember this data objects by ID? I was actually passing this one. Previously, previously it was passing in from, it was passing in from root data objects over here. Okay, it was passing for root data objects. But now I don't pass in that. So let's look at the last part. So now I'm going to pretend that this is the new QR code, that this is a new text. So I'm going to uh, break it out again. ID 00. Length 11, value is the next 11 characters. So let's count. Huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? And what am I going to do? I'm right now in this function. Okay? I'm right now in this loop. Okay, now we are we are extracting the data objects for the third data object, not for the original whole entire QR code. Okay, so we are going to do this thing, zero zero, which we have seen just now. Now this time around the specs, 
Where is it going to come from? Is it going to come from the root data objects by ID? No, because just now we passing this, which is basically referring to this part. Okay, this part, data of just by the we passing this as a new specs, the new specifications. So basically, it is this one. Specs ID zero zero. So basically, right now I just going to pass in this one. Okay. And now I'm going to go into analyze data object, which is over here. Does a specs belong to a template? No. Does, a, does it use an info template? No. So resolve data object becomes like this. So the ID is 0, 0. The name is globally unique identifier. The length is 11. The value is edgy.com.net, and I'm going to skip the comment. So this whole part, this whole part, where is it going to go to? So you return to the previous call over here at the bottom, or at the bottom, it's going to come here. Okay, it's going to come here. This is the first part, ID 00. Uh, globally, you need identifier. Later on, there will be some more 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, so on and so forth. So we'll keep on doing this internal uh, recursion. And this whole chunk, where is it going to go to? This is for the third data object. Okay, so it's going to go to the first part. Okay, so your final result is you're going to get an array. Inside each array, you have an array des describing each data object. So this first array is the first data object. It's a payload format indicator. Then blah, 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 second data object. Then third data object. This is the one. This is the array describing the third data object. Okay, it is uh, ID 26, merchant account information, length 81, it is long value. And it consists of nested data objects. So the first one is uh, sg.com.net. So you actually can go, you can actually go to two levels, two levels deep. Okay, now the boring part is over. I go to go through the demo. Okay, let me see. Okay, where is the demo? Um, let me show you the website first. Uh, Now, same thing, if you go to the repo, besides the code, SGQL parser as per MES, Monetary Authority of Singapore, the demo, the link is here. Okay? So I'm going to go to this link. Okay, let's see whether it works. Okay. Hello. Okay. Um, this uses the PHP parser library in the back end to pass it. But how about this? Hello. This uh, camera thing. I didn't code it myself. Okay, that's the beauty of open source. I went to find some JavaScript library, right? That actually can access the camera as well as pass a QR code. Okay, so it saves me the trouble. And the amazing thing is, this hello can actually work on your desktop. If you open it up on your iPhone uh, Safari browser, if, if you open it up on your Android phone, 
Chrome browser, it works as well. You can actually access the camera and scan the QR code. So you just need to go to this website uh, on your phone, and then you can actually use it to scan QR codes and try. Uh, if you look at the source code for this website, blah, 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 and uh, it's over here. Okay, I put some comments. The QR code scanner, let me see. Uh, okay, QR code scanner is actually from github.com slash meet slash instant scan. Uh, I put some notes over here on, uh, on some uh, changes that I did. And basically, this is the code for the, hello, the camera, and then scan the QR code. So for this library, it can actually detect that your device have two cameras. So normally, phone have front camera and back camera, right? So I put it on auto detect. So let's say if I load this website on my phone, right, you will use the second camera, which is usually the back camera. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I am. I have some uh, sample IGQ over here. So the story goes that actually uh, I found out about this. Then, uh, but. I didn't want to go all over Singapore, go and see which are the hawker stores that use SGQR. So actually, I first read about this SGQR on a Channel News Asia article. Okay? And I tried scanning the QR code in the article. And it actually worked. So actually, I could get the content. So at first, I used pen and, pa pen and paper to manually pass it. Oh, first two characters, then next two characters, then uh, count 11 characters, then Slowly, slowly, then uh, I decided I have myself right program to do it right. So uh, what I'm going to do now? Hmm. See whether I can beat this bigger. No. Okay. This responsive. Ah. Uh. Okay. Yeah. This is. Um. I'm going to take a picture of this QR code. Then I'm going to point it at the website. So you see on the website lah. So basically, uh Passion gadgets. Uh, so recently, I sent my electric unicycle, the blue thing over here, uh, for repair. So at the counter, I noticed, eh, they are using uh, SGQR. Uh, but the only payment they allow for SGQR is basically GrabPay. Okay, so I'm going to take a picture of this first. Okay. So, one take. Eh, oh, sorry. I need to point the... Uh, Okay, so SG QR code passed. So I just point the QR code at the webcam, right? So they'll pass it. So these are the contents of the QR code. You can use any QR code reader app to actually read the QR code and you get the same contents. Okay? So let's look at what's the result. Now, um, this is a result from the PHP parser code that I went through with you just now. Uh, it returns a PHP array. But for nice, pretty printing, right, I encode it into JSON so that it reads nicely. So the QR code, let's see whether I can make it bigger. The first one, as I said, is always ID00. Okay? ID00, the uh, length to value 1. Okay, let's look at the edge QR. Okay? 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1. Um, the second one usually okay, is the point of initiation method. ID 0, 1. The length is always 0, 2. And the value is either 11 or 12. 11 means this QR code will always can be reused. So most likely it's, uh, it's the same QR code, probably just a merchant uh, bank account. Uh, value of 12 is used when a new QR code is used for each transaction. For example, let's say uh, it contains an invoice number or it's a generated on the fly, it has a transaction amount. So I'll generate a new QR code for each transaction. In this case, the SGQR will have a value of 12 for ID01. Now, um, merchant account information. Starts from 26 to 51. So 
this is a so basically they are using template 26 to 51 to capture the payment provider so the first one is grab right so this is the value blah 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 this is a template reserved for additional payment networks so this is a template id 26 i went through just now it is a template so it breaks down into further data objects id 00 the globally unique identifier is com.grab so basically that this is grab's unique identifier how about this thing the value this is most likely the merchant's account id with grab when i first released this sgql someone some stranger emailed me uh, so can you write sgql generator i say yes and no there are many libraries out there that can generate a QR code they're not very easy there are many open source libraries out there uh, I know how the format of SGQR looks like but the thing is I do not have the merchant account IDs for each of the payment providers okay first thing I may not know what is this this may be some other value second thing okay I can collect enough QR codes to determine that okay actually this is the merchant ID but unless I'm the merchant and I tell you, even probably the chicken rice hawker wouldn't know his account ID with Grab. Only Grab would know. The chicken rice hawker won't bother about it. So in this case, I told the person, uh, no, because I don't have access to all this information. So let's look at some other information. ID 51, also the merchant account template. This is usually SGQR itself. SG.SGQR. Look at this. I have no idea what is this, okay? But it is past. This is so only SGQL app will actually understand what it stands for. Okay, but I can guess that this is 15 of September 2018 because that's the date that uh, SGQL launched. Uh, transaction currency so, uh, 702 so this is uh, this is why I included the comments in the configuration or else you wouldn't understand what this means so basically this 702 is a three digit representation of the currency according to ISO 4217 USD is 840 Sing dollar is 702 country code SG merchant name passion gadgets at the merchant city is actually Singapore and the CRC which is a check sign shall be the last data object in the QR code and the check sign is calculated according to something that I don't understand so I'm not going to bother explaining it so basically it's a check sign so it's a four character check sign so let's look at the other demo this is QQ Rice Amo uh, I was talking about this with my colleague and my colleague said hey I saw one at uh, QQ Rice oh. so I told my colleague to help me take a photo so this is interesting because uh, it does not support Nets it supports Alipay, BPay which is by Honest B and FaithPay so same thing I'm going to take a picture hey. okay Okay. Hello. Okay. Okay. Try again, ah. Huh? Okay. <coughs> okay. This is a new one because you can see, ah, uh, you can see QQ rice over here. Okay. So I'm going to skip the rest. So first part, okay, it's the ID 26 and then over here you have Honors B and under the Honors B you have MID G6 blah 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 so most ID this is the merchant ID for Honors B so it supports Honors, Honors B so it's using ID 26 then later on Okay, later on you have uh, ID 27, also merchant account information. And this time around, who is using it? This time around, FaithPay is using it. Okay, and uh, 
How does FavePay have a unique ID for its merchants? It's using a website, myfave.com slash QR slash 1066. So if I visit this on the website, I will probably see some information about uh, QQ Rice on FavePay. So third one, Alipay. ID 26, ID 27, ID 28. So right now, ID 28, this is the whole value. Because it's a template, so it will be broken up into more data objects. So same thing, ID 00, globally, you need identifier, values, come to Alipay. And same thing, you also like to use website to denote the merchant ID. And ID 51 also still used for SGQL. And let me see. And QQ Rice. Okay, let me see. Okay, the, mo the last one is the most interesting. So uh, how many of you are actually using Pay now? Have started using Pay now? So Pay now is basically an agreement among all the banks, right? So that, let's say we go for lunch. Then I, I pay I pay for the lunch. So you are paying back your copyright. So you can use your you can use your banking app, you open it up, you key my phone number. After that you say uh, you show oh this phone number belongs to Zion. So pay me 350. 350 enter, you'll be paid to my bank account. That's easy. Another way is I use my phone banking app to generate a pay now QR code. You scan it and then you pay using your you scan it using your banking app and then you pay for it. So pay now. So all the banks in Singapore support it. Uh, I generated this uh, SGQL sample. That means it doesn't contain any information about me. La. Okay, this one is a special one because it contains a transaction amount and the nested template ID under template ID 62. Remember I said that the nested can go up to two levels deep. So now this one will show how, what it means. Let me take a photo. Uh, Okay, let me just reload the page. Okay, this is the last demo. Okay, same thing, zero zero, payload format indicator, point of initiation method, uh, point of initiation method. The one that we're interested in is ID twenty six. Okay, ID 26, so merchant account information, this is the whole land. The globally unique identifier is sg.pay now. Payment, network specific, ID 01, value of zero. I have no idea what that means. Okay, probably if you collect enough pay now, QR codes, uh, you can kind of figure out, but until, until now, I don't know. Okay. Data object number two under template ID 26. This is a phone number. Obviously, I edited it out, right? Okay. So this is a phone number. Now, ID 03, same thing, value of zero again. I have no idea what it means. Because PayNow never released that tell us how they use SGQR. Number four, 2018 October 30th. This is the expiry date that I put for my PayNow code. So when I generate the PayNow code using my POSB banking app, right, I can I can actually specify when is the expiry date. So this is the expiry date. Okay. Uh, transaction amount. $1,234.56. So if you scan the QR code, basically you'll be, you'll be paying me that much. Now, this is a very special value. The comment is, shall not be included if the app should prompt user to enter the amount to be paid. If I use my banking app to scan this QR code, I will see the amount on my screen. $1,234.56. And I won't be able to change it. I won't be able to change it. Versus if... If I didn't have the transaction amount in my QR code, when I scan the QR code, like I said, I scan the chicken rice hawker, right? There will be a fear for me to key out $3.50. So this 
value will determine whether the amount is fixed, whether the user can change the amount in the QR code. Okay, merchant name. Basically, it will be my name. So if you are, uh, I actually will be Zion uh, if I generate a pay now QR code. And the most interesting is actually 62. ID 62 is the additional data field template. It is a template. Huh? So it can be broken up into data objects. So the first data object, ID 01, is the bill number. So the value is blah, 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 can be an invoice number. Now, the interesting part is actually ID 50, under template 62. ID 50, it is a template by itself also. So this value can be broken up into further data objects. Okay. So you have a template inside a template inside under the root template. So that is the purpose of showing this uh, QR code. Okay. And that's it. Okay, it's a one hour talk. I know it's very long. Hopefully it's uh, interesting. So um to re reiterate, if you want to find it, you can go to Zyno IG, you can go to GitHub portfolio, and then under repositories, you can just search for uh, SGQR over here. So under here, you get a source code as well as the link to the demo. So actually what you can do is you can load the demo page on your phone, and then let's say tomorrow when you go to South Fukuoka, you see one SGQR, right? point the camera at the, uh, point the website this website at the, at the SGQR and then you'll pass it and tell you the information behind the SGQR and that's all, thank you very much and okay.